what I'd like to talk about today is some new ideas, um, a vision, I would say, that um, we put together recently um, at runtime verification. But before that, which we call the universal truth framework, and I'll tell you what it is. Before that, they always say that we are well known. Well, I didn't know that, but if we are known, we are known mostly as security auditors. And um, we were actually the first who brought formal methods to the blockchain space. Like we were the first to formalize the uh, ERC20 token standard mathematically, the first to uh, audit Uniswap and formally verify it um, rigorously. We also um, modeled and verified the uh, beacon chain for Ethereum and the deposit two contracts. So if you move Ethereum from Ethereum 1 to Ethereum 2, you go through that contract, which, by the way, has only 129 support and we found three bots in it. And it was audited by several other companies before. So that's what we are really known for. Right? But what I'd like to convey today is that we are a technology company. We are a lot more than auditors. We do audit because we have the technology, because we can, because it pays the bill. But um, we develop technology, okay? and, and that's what I'd like to, to tell you today. So universal truth framework, what is that? So it's a framework in which every claim that is being made in that framework is verifiably true. Okay? So once you make a claim in that framework, you can actually check it yourself. Okay, so basically the claims will come with independent and very short, very thin, third party checkable proof certificates. Okay. And a claim can literally be almost anything that is computable, anything that is provable mathematically or computable. Actually, you see it in our framework, computability and provability are almost the same thing. Um, in particular, the execution of a program, that's a claim. If you take a program and you claim that this program does something, 42, then that's a claim that you make. Okay? That will be checkable independently. You don't have to trust the implementation of a programming language. You don't have to trust anybody. Um, a work done or an action, for example, a medical procedure has it been performed correctly. Okay? So that's a claim. Yes, it has been performed correctly. The formal correctness or security of, of, of some code, Uniswap is correct. An auditor claims that, right? So that's a claim. And actually, any mathematical theorem, for that matter, okay, even the math theorem, that's a claim. And in this universal truth framework, what we want to achieve is this. So you start with the claim, and somehow, for that claim, you'll get a proof. And this proof, imagine this proof like something very small, 250 bits, something that you check in something else. And now you know for a fact, absolute fact, that that is true. And you don't have to trust anybody. Not even other verification. <laughs> Simply because you check the proof. Okay, with a verified trusted checker. And I'll get to that. Okay. Any questions about the vision, the high level vision? By the way, feel free to ask questions. Let's make this as interactive as possible. It's a workshop. So, so time is relative. <laughs> um, <laughs> So what was that? Sorry? Uh, I repeat the question, by the way. So for the others. Uh, okay. So I just want to make sure that the claim is absolutely correct. If you want to hide anything in the claim, then you can formulate the claim in such a way. For example, if you want to hide somebody's age, but you want to prove that this person is older than 21, they have a beard, then you'll say there exists an age, A, such that A is larger than 41. Right? So you can abstract. Uh, through mathematics, and, and this you can hide if they if you want. Okay, so basically, our claim here, the meta claim, <laughs> claim, the meta claim is that almost everything that you care about can be formulated as a mathematical statement. And I will tell you what formalism for mathematics we are going to use. And then once you have that, 
Now, a mathematical proof will certify that that claim is correct. Okay, so that's the uh, idea. Good question. Any other question? I know it's very abstract now. I'm going to do more sessions. <clears throat> okay. So, so what? Why? Why do you want that? Right? So what can you do with that? Well, I will, I will claim that this is a huge thing if you can achieve it. Okay? It captures, especially in instances, lots of other similar but simpler or more restrictive ideas. For example, verifiable computing. A verifiable computing is a big idea, right? Where you execute a program and you verify the computation cryptographically, give a certificate to others, and now they can check the certificate on this. You can this way you can run in the cloud computations. You can send your security critical code to run in Amazon Cloud, and then you get the result and you know it's correct because it is the uh, the core value is verifiable computing, the big area. It's a special case. Okay. Why? Because program execution or computation is a particular kind of place. Okay. And with what I'm presenting, that will literally become mathematical theory. That will have a proof. And computation is a proof. The search for a proof. There's this proof here in code. Is that something similar to some old idea? Right. Is that something similar? Proof here in code. Um, I think this is more general actually than proof code. You don't yeah, need to carry the proof anymore. You can locally check it. The, the result. And then you send the code with the certificate that is correct. Don't don't check anything. Yes, old stuff. <clears throat> and by the way, George Nicola is a good player. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um all right. Now we have zero knowledge variants of languages, zero knowledge EVM, zero knowledge uh, kind of VM. There is five variants, zero DK, LLVM, Cairo, all kinds of languages that provide zero knowledge guarantee. Again, you are going to have that as a special instance. You are going to have DK length for any programming language, which you have a form of semantics, and that will be correct by construction. You will have to prove it correct. Okay? I know it may sound like a crazy claim, but it's not. Now, formal verification, security audit, all these things that we do as security auditors. Currently, these are just PDF files, so security PDF files that you give to your clients and they give to their clients and so on and so forth, right? Um, there is no accountability, no checking. You don't even know if the PDF file indeed certifies the protocol is working or nothing. Um, well, these are also claims. And once you formally verify a protocol like Uniswap, we verify Uniswap, right? Probably five people bother to read that and understand. The others just said, OK, it's verified, without even looking at the spec. Okay, So that's a bit of a, you know, uh, some of more, <laughs> let me put in my list. Um, so all these should be claims, formalized as claims, and they should be checked and put on the blockchain somewhere, and uh, same like any other thing. Right? There's no difference between the security audit and a program that executed them or to what it is. And now you can go beyond actually blockchain and uh, usual applications. You can go into critical procedures, devices, medical um, in our situations, like doctors are sued because they kill the patient. And the doctor say, well, I applied the medical guidelines correctly. So something unexpected. Okay, how can you prove that? So now it's still with all litigation and so on. Now you can have a Proof. There's a claim here of proof. The medical guidelines are formalized, actually. In my group at the University of Illinois, we actually formalize medical guidelines. And I can formalize the RC20. Um, and now you can have a proof that is after that you apply the procedure correctly, but I'm not going to show you what it is. But I'm showing you only that the procedure was applied correctly. And then in aviation, automotive, robotics, basically AI. You know? So why should we trust AI? Right? You can think of AI as searching for a solution to a complex problem, a claim. Right? I have a claim that it, and they have given me a solution. I check it. I don't trust it. Okay? You can check it. And so on and so forth. There are lots of applications. That's, why, that's my point to this slide. Okay, how does this work? So if you go home with this slide and understand this slide, I'm happy. Okay, so that, that's the big idea here. So the big idea is to split this huge problem of meta in two parts. One, 
is conventional mathematics. Conventional mathematics, as we know it. We have a mathematical theorem and you get a mathematical proof of it. How you get that proof? Let's not worry about that now. And now, the second part is the proof checker for that mathematical proof. But that proof checker is now not. That proof checker incorporates a cryptographic technique that will allow you to generate a correctness certificate that the mathematical proof that you presented for your claim and this case is correct. Okay, so that's a big idea. Now let me go into the data. So you start with your claim, let's say phi, and we use the case framework, but I want to emphasize that, that case K is not really the critical piece here. It is for us because we understand it, we created it, we know how to get something done to do it. Right, but K also has backend in Cox, Lean, uh, the Duxi, uh, well, this circuit. So the, the idea is that you can use anything you want in this, in this universe to get your mathematical proof done for the place. Okay. And you get it. <laughs> now, the problem with very rigorous mathematical proofs is that. They are huge. If you go through all the steps, the axiom, Newton step, everything, you have easily hundreds of thousands, millions, billions of steps. But they are very low level. Like here, step 248, you this sub formula. Many of them are axioms. Typically, at the beginning of a proof, you have lots of axioms, which you just use. And then you use inference rules, like more components here. By two by two forty eight. Okay, so now I can input two forty eight by motor corner. And you want to have all the details in the proof. In the mathematical proof. You put the proof object. In this proof object, you want to have all the details. Because these proofs are not made for humans to be. Humans work here and here. So right, they get a proof done with automation, all the things they know. But once you get the actual rigorous mathematical proof. You want it to be very low level, very dumb, very boring. The more boring it is, the better. Very low level. Why? Why do we want it? Because computer everything. Very fun. Exactly. So the advantage of a huge, very dumb proof is that you can have a very simple proof checker for such a proof. As a matter of fact, we implement the proof checker for the logic that we use here, matching logic, which has only 240 lines of code. That's it. So with 240 lines of code, written in MetaMask, and this is also important because I'll get to details there, but now that I'm here, I'll tell you, because I think it's interesting. So MetaMask may sound like something super advanced, but the reality is that MetaMask is a very simple language. It has more than 20 implementations around, even on SPGA. And all of them are like a hundred, a few hundred lines of code. I think there is only one which is 2,000 lines of code. It's in C. The implementation in C of MetaMath has 2,200 lines of code. So MetaMath itself is super simple. And now we have 240 lines of code in MetaMath, right? Because I'm, I'm insisting on this because this is a trust. You have to trust it. If MetaMath has a bug in that implementation, then we have a problem because you may check the proof if it's incorrect. Well, to give the semantics of the checker and so on, you can, but uh, you may still have bugs somewhere that can, you know, short circuit <laughs> somehow. At some moment, you have to trust something. At some moment, you have to trust the, the silicon, the circuit, right? How do you know that alpha and alpha particles doesn't go through your chip? And make the zero one. You don't know. You have to trust something. But the advantage of having a language like MetaMask, 20 plus implementation, you can literally imagine a future in which you can have like thousands of proof checkers, you know, running on blockchain in different places, one data control, because that's the only thing they would have to do. Well, we go one step further, um, because then we did a cryptographic proof actually. 
So actually, that's interesting. You don't even need to trust. Because you can, once you produce the cryptographic proof, and once the program, these two points like the code, are on the blockchain, right? And this proof will guarantee that that program executed, you know, will give you the certainty. Then you need to prove the certainty is correct. Okay, but I'm jumping to that. Uh, good, I like that your question. Um, but compare that to Coq, for example, which is one of the most, uh, you know, uh, Influential, uh, in fact, uh, improver, right? Which has like 30, 000, the proof checker of Coq has 30,000, some people say 8,000, other people 30, depending on which two libraries or what. Uh, 30,000, let's say 10,000, right? Some of them. 10,000 lines of OCaml. And now you have your OCaml compiler, which translates to LLVM, <coughs> and then LLVM to XAPT, and so on, right? So there's a lot to trust on that. Uh, and actually, you know that people prove false in both with an empty twice. Right. Right. So it's rubber. Okay. So proof checker, very small in the programming language, which itself has lots of implementations, all very small. Okay. So trust based small. And now the proof checker will take his input what? Yeah. That's my particle theory and the proof. Gamma, the particle theory in which you claim is five. Gamma can be DVM semantics or Java semantics or Q or whatever, right? Gamma is the action that you trust, right? And the proof checker implements, takes its input two or three things, depending on how we follow. Let's take the theorem, which is gamma satisfies five, the claim, okay? And the mathematical proof, five. It's huge. And uh, check the all right, so now we snark this group checker. Or, right, we now infuse cryptographic tricks there that allow you to prove with a very thin certificate, right, that there exists a proof by that taken as a second input to the proof checker. Make the proof checker return true again. Think of the proof checker as a predicate. True or false. So take two arguments, the claim and the mathematical proof, and say yes or no. No doesn't mean it's false. No means I couldn't check it. Right? It's your obligation to put all the details here. By the way, even spaces here matter because you want it to be done. Put exactly the spaces. I don't want to put, you know, this much. No D3 here, no parsing, anything. Just don't. All right, okay, so what is different here for the conventional approach is to decay um, uh, computing in a blockchain universe? Is that instead of snarking a virtual machine like the EVM, which is huge, so, actually, by the way, it has more than one million lines of code. So doing that, let that be as clean as possible. Actually, let it generate this proof. Implement it right to lock all the steps, right? Until the proof is very rigorous. And only if not this thing, we get exactly the same confidence. Actually, we get more confidence because there's separation of concerns. So the specification of the language is public, everybody can check it. Nobody can check a million lines of code implementing it. All right, so there's the idea. But this has actually uh, any questions about the big idea? All right, so I would say that the applications that I mentioned, the previous slide, this one, are kind of obvious once you look at it, once you get it. They're kind of obvious. Of course, you know, I can have computations, I can have you know, audits, I can have everything in the proof. But let me show you a very interesting application that I would like to do for some of it. I don't mean any competition. <laughs> well, right? Maybe I will convince you guys to do this, you know, it should be great. I think this will solve all the current limitations of blockchain. Let me go through some limitations and then how we think we can solve it. For example, duplication of computation. All nodes created to the programs because they don't trust each other. I mean, there's no only way to verify something. That's huge. So, <laughs> we shouldn't have one, okay? But we don't have any other. Yes. 
Now, they have hardware programming languages or VM languages. Right? If you want to write programs on my blockchain, you see blockchain should use EDM or yeah, what or NMDM or whatever you choose as a language. And now all these correctness arguments, excuse me, why this is correct? All these are external activities, right? But their correctness is physical. I mean, I want to know before I put my money in an ERC twenty token that it's correct. I'm going to take any check. That's equally the fact that that is correct is equally important to the execution of a program which I want to be correct, right? So they live on the same level. Uh, but currently they are okay. So I believe this approach to generate will uh, enable a new generation of blockchain. I like to call the blockchain of truth. <clears throat> because this could be a blockchain which any claim that you make on this blockchain, not only execution. Right? So currently blockchain same execution. But any claim that can be made, stored, checked, and so on. So execution correctness, all of this can be stored on the blockchain. You can write smart contracts in literally any programming specification language. Right, I have the specification of the programming language on the blockchain, and now I make a claim about that. A particular program which is on the blockchain, about that program with that programming language, and by the way, EBM 2.5 is completely different from EBM 2.2. I make a claim about that program on that language, and this is the place. Right, and now I store a state that accounts like a map uh, that people who decide to use that by convention accept it. Yeah, as a, as a all right, and you can execute transactions once and for all locally, and then send the snark around and validate it only check snark, right? So you can have a very lightweight um, consensus protocol, and then all the nodes just check the right? No execution, no VM. I think actually the blockchain of the future will not have that. Why? I can execute locally and see the certificate, correct the certificate. Actually, that already happened in Cairo or in Asia, but for a specific language. And now, every claim, again, that is being put on that blockchain, I hope in the future, because initially people may make claims without proof, they have to move things fast right, and break them. But I hope in the future, any claim will actually have a mathematical proof. Which will make it seem with the cryptographic proof, right? In the future, it's a proof of proof, a cryptographic proof of a mathematical proof. But I don't want to show it to you, not because I want to hide it, but because it's huge. Sometimes you may want to hide it. You want to hide the 21, uh, yeah, your age, you need to hide the proof. Because when you prove that existential claim, you may use generalization. The proof, and then you can actually have the actual that you need. Anyway, that's uh, yeah. Any questions? How will it be with the cryptographic proof? So, the cryptographic proof, right, will be generated by um, a circuit, cryptographic circuit, that will have to be written or generated, right, for uh, these 240 lines of code. You can formally verify that. There are tools to formally verify the tweet. Julian here, I will show our tool, right? Some, some such tools. Um, so you can verify those. But again, I only have to trust two port lines of code instead of a million. It's a lot better. So that's why you want to minimize the trust base. Because at some point you have to trust something. Yes. Uh, Mm. Fine, equally fine. You may get a different certificate here. I think, yeah, they prove the same thing. <laughs> they give us from that point of view. But I think actually, once this becomes hopefully popular, then we'll start looking seriously into proof engineering. How can you get a proof this more? For example, if you have a loop, yeah. if you have an invariant for that, then I can get more successful. Actually, there's a case where formal verification makes me faster. Okay, <laughs> that is exactly. crazy, but if you formally verify the program, I'll give you faster execution. And then 
Yeah, then I don't the care. Mindset. I don't care what smart technique you use under the hood to get that group because I check it. And I start with actors and at the bottom, line one billion, I got exactly my place. The theorem. Done. Yeah. <clears throat> If you, if you can study, so we found, we found, we did some experiment and we found that this group object, my master group object can be confused. It is hard to even store them. Actually, what we have to do, we have to fight this, right? So luckily, we check thinking, actually the proof checker is embarrassingly parallel. These proofs are so beautiful from a checking point of view because it's a Hilbert style proof. Each step follows from either an axiom or some previous step, and all this can be checked in parallel. So you can have like a method use implementation and check all these billions of steps in parallel and then combine the true result of everything that's in the end. But that would require you to have the whole proof, right? But we found that it's very hard to solve the proof. So that's, that's again, this, these are problems that I, I love to have. <laughs> so now we have a problem how to solve these big proofs. And uh, currently we think of fighting, right? We can send all these steps. Quickly to the checker, the checker check, then the certificate, and then discard the part. So, this is you. Yes. So, uh, one question I have then is the feasibility from the computational perspective. Because here you have a proof that's, you know, uh, 100,000 lines, as in this example, right? So, typically speaking, I believe that start with the proof generation happens in n log n. Right. And in fact, the functions are pretty big. Starts are a little bit, and in fact, it's n by log n, right? But if you're if you're checking a proof of this size, I do wonder about the computational feasibility. Yeah, agreed. Uh, okay. The verification is straightforward, but the generation right. totally agree. So ironically, yeah. ironically, yeah. what does that speak louder? Locally, you pay locally, yeah, yeah. or you may have like services, cloud services, sure. or you know. Like, that's not parallel. Yeah. yeah. There'll be no minors. I don't care who generates the proof. Can you one server, one super fast server, not even trust it? Once he gives me this certificate, yeah, this proof, I know it's proof. No. So you, I can show you make a claim, you make a transaction, right? Let's say. You make the claim, you have to pay that cost, right? Whether you run it locally on your machine or go to some cloud service, somebody offering these services, and I hope Rapid Official provides these services as well, right? You have to little thing there, but then you generate this and then it's very easy to check on the blockchain. Okay. So you only pay yourself once. No, no. You the cryptographic proof, not this proof. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the same thing happens with DKEVM or with any approaches or Kair or any approaches now. As a matter of fact, if you play with them, they take our day okay. to generate these certificates. Yes. I think we can actually beat them. And I think the reason we can beat them, to get back to your question, Julian, this is linear in the size of the program execution. Yeah. Okay. We don't pay any complexity, non asymptotic, uh, non linear cost. Yeah. But we have an advantage. We can use formal verification knowledge, like an improving value or something else. Right to make this smaller. If I have a while loop, for example, I'll put the sum of numbers from so one to one million. I know that n times n plus one by two because I proved this that program correct and I have a value. Like but once, yeah, I do it once when I verify yeah. the program. I prove this program has this property, yeah. and now I take an execution and I generate a proof using this additional knowledge that I have, and then instead of executing like two thousand steps in the loop. Here I have just calling the lemma. Yeah. So people then will be incentivized to do security audit because that will make them their programs faster and cheaper. So formal verification makes things faster and cheaper, which is sounds weird. <laughs> but but it's true. All right. So, um, Julian, I cannot continue without you. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, I'm, 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 I'
<laughs> right. So I will go very quickly to what is K because I already know most people here. I don't know if you know what it is, but just that the thing quickly. Right. So K was created to address this um the state of the art literally in, in programming languages, which personally I think sucks. Okay, why? Because we have languages on the one hand and we keep creating new languages. And then we have tools on the other hand, and we keep creating new tools. And then we have all these combinations of them, right? Like this is GPT instead of here, right? This is Java Pathfinder instead of here. Okay, this is uh, yes, yes, right? This is AGVM here or KVM, right? And people put their life, many of them. All their life into just one error. <laughs> um, so I think that's ridiculous. We have to maintain, it's a maintenance health, right? You have to maintain n times m system. And, um, and in the end, why you do that? Because you need to make certain claims in the end, right? About your program in this programming language. Like this execution happened, or this uh, optimized, uh, what is algorithm called, or this uh, thing evolved. Right, this contract is a quality access to ancient so of course. Right? And you have all these different tools, and they sometimes share nothing with each other. Um, so, yeah, it's a maintenance there, and this comes to two big pain points one for developers, the obvious one, okay? because you have model checkers for all these languages. They are the same thing. Take transition systems, parametric transitions of some sort, with some constraints. That's it. Why redo the same work over and over and over and over again for each language? Right? And the other way around, you advance the language, go from Java 4 to Java 1.5, and now suddenly these tools are behind. Some of them are behind because nobody updated them. So it's uh, application is bad in general. Uh, right. So that's developers, and that's for users now. As users, all of us, we have to swallow. The coding and the coding. We have to just accept it. Right? I accept that this program exactly correctly and this was the output. I accept that this code. I accept that this is correct. So everything we do in blockchain, we just have to put a lot of our trust into all of it. Okay, so pain points for developers, pain points for users, for everybody. Yes. We have a question from the room. How can we learn from achieve mathematical examples for two hundred and fifty six with three proposals? How that Right. So that's a whole field <laughs> in zero knowledge cryptography, and Julian will talk about that, partly, hopefully. Um, I cannot cover that here. So we should take probably cryptography class <laughs> and um, look at all the. So there are, there is a lot of research on that front. Here we just combine ideas for now. Yeah, but that, that, that's a very good question because it looks impossible. But, and I couldn't believe it actually the first time I, I heard it. But then after hours and hours and hours of discussion, I was like, wow, this works. And that, but we have to use it perfectly. <laughs> All right, good. So anyway, so pain points that K tried to address, and this is how he addressed the first pain points. <laughs> the developer, like this, right, it says N times M, maintenance hell, you have N plus M, right? You plug and play your language in the framework, and the framework implements all these tools parameters you want and for all. So this not only separation of concern, this is good in general, but it also is this initially unexpected, but increasingly, you know, important, uh, interesting network effect, where you fix a bug in the model checker or you optimize the model checker. Now you optimize the model checker for all languages. But the other way around, you update the semantics of CDM, and now you suddenly have all the tools updated. Okay? So that turned out to be actually even, you know, competitive advantage on the commercial side in our company. Because we always had the latest you know, version of KEDF. Our competitors, they had to spend months to update their tools whenever they updated EVM. We spent a couple of days, and then we had all of it for EVM. Right over. And so that's for developers. And so if this works, right, that's how things should be done. And the only concern is that, well, what if it doesn't work? And we put 20 years into it, and we put more. This is the way to do things, right? and that's how we do it. And then for users, K 
decay actually is nothing but a proof searcher. It's a helper. It helps you find proof. Everything that these blue boxes do, execution, analysis, verification, everything in game is a mathematical of a task, which is formalized as a theorem, and a mathematical theory, which is a language or a specification of your protocol or whatever it is. Right? So the mathematical proof and and this is important for so computation is a special tool for proof, right? Because when we talk to people, they think of us, especially investors, uh, they think of us as security users. Done, right? So they don't see this connection. Actually, execution is a particular case of proof. If we know how to do it, really proof, we know how to do it execution. Actually, cleaner and better as well. Okay? And in my view, I have so far, maybe I didn't look at the right places, but I think this is the smallest proof checker ever for a logical proof complexity. So the matching logic is a variant of second order logic. You can go into details if you want. You can universally quantify one of the second order logic. <laughs> okay? So if you have quantified number of steps, it's top level, but you do have all the power of second order, you have induction. Initial algebra semantics because uh, all these are there. We really don't need more. So we didn't have a need for more. All right. Um, okay, now, as an implementation of the system, it's huge. Some people say it's actually the largest phone network system uh, ever. It has more than 500,000 lines of code in four different languages um, and uh, huge. No open source, by the way. So the question, well, question could be probably somebody had it. That the line is why should you trust it? That's a very valid <laughs> question. And my answer to you should be that you shouldn't. Uh, because I guarantee that it has bugs. Keep finding bugs. Right? So that's the whole point, actually. You don't need to trust it, you check. Generate proof. Okay, it's a helper to find proof. You find proof, then you don't need to worry about it anymore. At all. So, all right. How are we doing with time? Mr. Chair. Well, nine minutes, uh, 10 minutes okay. All right. So what's in K? Okay, so we have this uh, new tool in K, uh, the case summarizer, which is very important for everything we do. Now it's a key tool in almost all the blue box that I showed you there. Um, so what is that is the following. You see that in compiler. Right, but we do it semantically, driven by the semantics. We take a programming language, we put semantics gamma. We take a program, which is like a claim, right? Claim this program does something. Um, it is a sum of numbers or whatever, up to n, and you store the result in s, and you cannot tell. By the way, can you say this program is incorrect? <laughs> For n equals zero, it turns one because it doesn't take the loop. This is one. Right. But for n larger than one, it's correct. Right. So what what the case summarizer does? Take this input of program, the language of program, and you generate such a thing, which is like a control flow graph, in the best way, where you have something you initialize before the loop, then you have the loop, and then you exit. Okay. Well, the difference is that each of these nodes is actually a formula, like a file, a metrologic pattern that is matched by all the states. That will reach that point. Um, and each arrow is a semantic rule. It's a summary of a basic block. Okay, so if you have a basic block of statements, right, suppose that they have no branching or anything, then K will symbolically execute those and will get their summary and will add that summary as a new semantic rule, which is really a theorem or a lemma. <laughs> theorem, right? Something that's provable. From the individual semantics of the, of the contract. So actually, this graph is a bunch of theorems. One, two, three, four, five, whatever. Twenty theorems that are being proved once and for all. But very smart theorems, right? That allow you to now summarize, get things more succinct, right? Now I can take up this program and execute it. And instead of executing it naively, going through all the language constructs to their basic semantics, I'm going to execute it here. And this is almost a thousand times faster, actually. This is, by the way, this is the case definition. 
It's like semantic based compilation. It's a key definition that captures the way you would write this program in K. But you are lazy, you didn't want to write it in K, you wanted to write it in this language for some reason. But now if I use the semantics of that language, I can extract the actual behavior of the program anyway. And if I execute this, take some time, and this will be like almost a thousand times faster. Okay. And we have very fast backend for execution, right? So with this, actually, our semantics of KEVM runs EVM program faster than all the interpreters of EVM except one, which is implemented mm -hmm. found in Rato. But that doesn't even interact completely with the, with the network. That's implemented for a particular tool, and we are slower than that. But other than that, we are faster simply because we have a compiler for EVM. But if you go by the semantics, you just go to that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, this will give me a smaller proof. Yeah. Password program, smaller proof. Yeah. And by the way, this are proved by construction. We execute this program and actually we don't even need to search for proof of this. They are constructed and we have a proof of Well, so this is like divide and conquer of the big proof, right? I stick it in chunks and I store what I need and then I generate it. All right. Um, then what we, another thing we did, we used to, to this tool Foundry, which is uh, now the most popular tool for testing the um, solidity uh, contract. And the way it works, if you write a contract, uh, well, you have a contract sum that is what it works, that's here, right? And now you write test. You write test like this. You write some setup, and then you write a whole bunch of property tests. They are called property tests, not specifications, but they are really specifications because they are parametric. <laughs> This test the property up there, and you say, Well, call the code, assume something. By the way, you see that I assume the wrong thing, right? And call the program, and then assert something again, okay? And, um, and what Foundry does, it does fuzzy testing, it generates lots of random inputs, right? Trying to, you know, find bugs, not proof correct, find bugs. And by the way, it will not find the bugs, it will not check any code zero. Um, however, if you put a limit as more than 10, then it will take cost to check the whole thing for five years. But you never have a guarantee. So, what we've done, we modified Foundry internally. We added a new button instead of fuzzy testing, very fast. <laughs> right? And when we verify, we actually do what I showed on the previous slide. We do a case summarizer, execute the program, and take this input as symbolic instead of constraints for the fuzzer. Um, and then execute the program symbol can actually prove this. This is really a specification, and users write specifications without knowing it. And then they verify, formally verify their program by pushing that button without knowing it. It's a story of formal verification. <laughs> the people use it without knowing it. Right, so okay, it's hidden under the hood, learning curve zero for these developers, and uh, yeah, familiar UI. And you also find this error here, right? It's a linear feature. No, two of us. All right, and I have this like, not for you, but for um, others who think that property testing is not powerful enough. And that's incorrect because property tests are for people, parametric, in some key variables, and actually you can simply have a one to one correspondence between. For logic specification and property testing, as powerful as formal verification general. If you need anything else, those things will be very tricky. And remember that you always have the full power of K to write any property you want. So there is always an active strategy there. All right? Many users don't even want to write this specification, right, at all. They just want to know whether something is a quality article to talk in that case, you already have the specification. Actually, we have specified in Foundry in that style, ERC20 tokens and lots of other tokens, and we have a tool for ERC. Um, Runtimeification.com, where all you have to do is to write your address here where you have your binary, and you check it. Okay. 
happen automatically. It will tell you if it's compliant or not. But what it does under the hood is all this thing. This is multi lane you know, laziness. Don't want to do anything, but just to check. All right. Good. And we don't work only with blockchain. So we have a tool for C, for RDMX. We can touch it with C, does the same thing for C. And we have a contract with Jump Crypto where we help them formally verify the Solana validator. They write the Solana validator for five dancer. Um, you think Solana is slow, they want it a lot faster, and they implement their validator, and we have them verify. And the same idea, but a different language, a different setting, the same technology under the hood, where you run your code usual way, you see nothing, but if you run it with our tool, KTC, again, the learning curve is one character, just in case it's okay. Now, when you run it, you get errors like this. It tells you exactly what's the problem. They tell you to the C standard. They don't argue with us whether that's when you find behavior or not. Go to the C standard, check it. All right. And I think it's just one minute, right? Thank you, guys. Okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. So, what under the hood? Okay. I just want to tell you this. One under the hood is matching logic, which is the foundation of case. But I want to clarify that it's not only the foundation of K. Right? You can also do exactly the same thing that you do with K. You can do it with Pop, Lean, and other languages. Namely, you can shallowly embed, shallowly embed these languages into matching logic, meaning that you don't have to code the proof system of matching logic in these systems. Actually, it's the exact opposite. You simply be sugar. Whatever you're doing, for the theorem that you're writing for, the proof that you're writing for, you sugar them to theorem and proofs in matching logic. And this is exactly what we do with K as well. Um, and what's important about this logic and critical for its application is, is that it is very small. Right? It has only seven constructs and 15 proof rules. You can write it on a napkin. This is the whole logic. And I like to joke that uh, you can write it on a napkin even after you have six beers. <laughs> Right, because it's easy to remember. Uh, it's first of the logic, then frame rules, and then big point rules, and it's completely standard. And you only have to remember these rules, literally. And this is a weird rule, it is a text that's true in the logic. Uh, there's a whole set, but it's like a proof of inhabitants. Anyway, the point is that everything we do in K or everything is a proof in this Hilbert style. Uh, System and uh, we prefer K instead of Coffee and others, but simply because we have it and we control it. But we implement backend in this language for K so that it's the K automation, K focuses on automation, right? If the K automation doesn't work, then you only can exit in Coffee Lean with it there, <laughs> and then you can get the proofs back. To matching logic, they get to the original gamma, right? You only use copper in the network, right? So that's one thing. And the other one is the MetaMask that I already told you. We chose MetaMask to implement a proof checker for this logic because it has lots of implementation, it's simple, and I told you all of this. This is how MetaMask looks like. It's already 10%, 22 lines in the proof checker. It is like a small component. Two more components, mitigation, phi one, phi two, phi one, input phi two, something. Um, and then also in MetaMask, you can check proof, like it's a 44 step out of a video. Yeah. Um, and we implemented a prototype of this in Rust, actually in a variant of Rust that is supported by this zero. Uh, they, 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 they compile to this phi, and then uh, they have a zero knowledge circuit that implements. This file, they call it DKVM, and that has about 40,000 lines of code. Okay, so it's very complex. And back to the question, you have to trust that implementation, 40,000 lines of code, or verify it. But they don't have a formal semantic, as far as I know of any of those. So I know that you now they did something with Beans, but they tried to do something on that front, but I don't know how far they would say that. So we collaborate with Team Saxon from this, and also with Andrew Miller. From UIC, but it's my it's not an advisor, no, so and we implemented this. And now you'll ask how fast it is and so on. Well, we only managed to handle 20,000 steps, and uh, they claim that that's because they don't have recursive start yet. 
is the next thing they want to explore, and we are waiting for them. But uh, actually, what I want to do is to implement this group checker in all the different DK languages there DK EVM, DK EVM, Cairo, um, DK MEDM, and the experiment, which one is better. And once we learn all that, I'm pretty sure what will happen is that we are going to write our own circuit by hand. Because what is different in our approach compared to the other approaches, I know that you will kick me out, um, is that we need only one circuit for one program. And now you have support for all languages, DK for all languages. Right? So like in DK EVM, for example, you have you know, the DK EVM, which is a complex circuit. And depending on how you count, you can have more than one million lines of code that you have to trust literally to implement EVM as a circuit, right? And uh, and you simply have to trust it. That is, they don't even have a semantic of EVM. When I asked them, they said, well, we try to implement the case faithful to the yellow paper. But yellow paper is already obsolete. Nobody uses it anymore. Right? So there's only one literally rigorous common expression of EVM. KVM. And we know the people who use it, it's actually public, and uh, people use it, but they don't, right? So uh, I don't even know what how they can make this claim. But anyway, all they guarantee is certificate for particular kind of claims execution, right? Compare that to our approach, where you can take any claim, in particular the execution claim, right? Where you plug the EVM semantic, and get a mathematical proof, which is a huge one. Right? This is public. Hopefully, again, it should be on the blockchain somewhere, vetted by the Ethereum Foundation and other institutions. Somebody has to take that for the EVM semantic. You plug it, then you get this proof, mathematical proof. And then you have this proof checker, which we are still in search for a good, really good circuit for it. Currently, we just you know, outsource it to others, but eventually we have a very efficient technique for this, and then you get exactly the same thing. Well, this would be a different certificate, likely, but checking that by exactly the same thing. But now you can plug and play any command here. You don't have to do it only for you. And you have one circuit. I would, yeah. I like to say that this is probably one of the most, but let me make it really good. This is the most important program ever written. Okay? Because with 249 support, you can check everything, everything we do. It is, and so we do blockchain, and so we do the computer, right? Everything can be checked with this one program. And then if it's not quick, we can. All right, no, I'll finish this one. Wait, what happened before? Probably EVM, yes. EVM. We need some more work to instrument the K NLBM backend, right? To produce, we currently produce a proof object outside because we didn't want to test here with the NLBM backend, but we have to get into the NLBM backend, the fast execution backend, and generate it. Project and it will be for EDM. And I think what we should do, we should provide a competitor to take EDM right away. I believe that we are going to get faster effort. I'm confident. Okay. And once we have that, I think we should provide an alternative layer to Ethereum using exactly the infrastructure which is public, except for the interpreter itself, the interpreter interpreter itself, right? Because they took care already of all the method three stuff. Right, how to go from layer two to layer one, because they kind of thought we use that, but just the interpreter itself to be a lot faster. Anybody here use ZK EVM? Try to play with it, right? Very slow, right? So, um, let's go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm very happy that you have that mentality. Guys, please have this mentality. Right? Don't think of just let's implement this beautiful prover, this beautiful um, you know proof checker. Everything must be practical and become a product. Right? Has to back it also, product. Right? 
all of these are products they have to support a course in a company and this will also allow us to be better students better foundation other questions yeah i think i'm taking that question i i have a question online okay so um i understand that you generate metamath proofs right yeah uh, doesn't metamath come with a proof checker by default why do you need an extra proof checker uh, to trust <laughs> so there, there are 20 plus proof checkers all these implementations of metamask they are proof checkers okay? Ah, okay but the problem is that you have to ship your mathematical proof to them right so where do you run them if you if you run them in the cloud you have to ship your mathematical proof to the cloud or generate it there or whatever right so these mathematical proofs are going to be huge terabytes I think petabytes maybe so what you want is to snark that proof checker have a new variant of proof checker okay that generates you a trusted result because you cannot just run the proof checker locally on your laptop and then claim hey i checked it it works because everybody can do that Right. How can I trust your execution? And that's what the DK circuit does. It doesn't allow you to cheat. Okay, thanks. Yes. Is the proof specific and you can snark because you are no. one constant no. time a constant size proof or to be honest, I don't know. Yeah, I don't care. We tried with we started with snark and it looks like we need to use recursive start so yeah. anyway. Right, yeah. so we are completely open. I talked to the ZK LLVM guy, if I didn't get yeah. his name, and he said, Ah, oh, don't worry, you don't need it because it's start. You can use the ZK LLVM, we have just normal recursion, but we have some tricks that people work. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. You have to try it. <laughs> yeah, so I don't care literally. It doesn't even have to be six times. Yeah. Uh, small enough, you just need small enough. So the last two questions. Come on, though. This is not a Nazi company. <laughs> <laughs> we can go. We can go beyond that. <laughs> So, 
right. There will be something that you need to trust, right? And uh, we still believe, I mean, this can go even beyond blockchain, but the blockchain is a great tool for uh, recording history, storing stuff, right? So the EVM semantics, they say, well, you can have the EVM semantics, have a wrong semantics. By the way, you know the division by zero is allowed in EVM. So E divided by zero is zero, so that's fine, right? For some reason. So we have to implement that. Also, I really dislike it. I would like to have a check, but we don't. Right. So you can hack this, get a wrong group because of this. You can hack this, get a wrong file. So the idea is that this should be on the blockchain. This is the ERC20 contract that can be for some other. Right? The code is there. EVM semantics is there. This is vetted by the Kino Foundation. This is vetted by, I don't know, Uniswap, right? Or whoever or they use. And um, so the input, the point is that the input to the proof checker, except the mathematical proof, the input is public and vetted by others. Right? The only missing part is the mathematical proof. And even that is not needed except for checking it to the proof checker. So the proof, when you generate the proof, right, the proof you start with axiom, you read things from gamma, the EDM, right, you read things from there and then generate, execute the proof and then at the end, okay, you don't even have the last step, you stop, because the last step must be the place, okay, so you don't even put this into the, into the checker, right, the checker has only the missing, the gap that's missing. 